ஸ்ரீலங்காவே பிரதம வரட SLT 4G within then PO TV நரம்பன்ன இதிரியட்ட மகனேன SLT 4G லேங்கத்துக்கும் வெடிக்கிறகன்ன லாவுஜு ருப்பியல் பனாட்டாடுக்கலா மாமே என்ன அப்பித்தேக்கப் போம் Tonight, reading the Riot Act, President Gotabe Rajapaksa gives sleeping central bank officials heated economic recovery ultimatum. Catch me if you can. Bond scam culprit Arjuna Mahindra now known as Harjan Alexander. The good times are over. CCTV and jammers to be installed at prisons after luxury goods discovered. Recovery effects. May Purchasing Managers Index bounces back, erasing April rock bottom situation. All this and much more coming up on this Tuesday, the 16th of June 2020. Nava Sunlight Sakura, then Dikukal Pavatina Sakura Malsuandin. From Ada Verana, this is Ada Verana First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A very good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Shanella Fernando. Moving on to your top stories for tonight. President Gotabe Rajapaksa gave officials of the Central Bank an ultimatum this morning, charging them with proposing plans for the rebuilding of the country's at-risk economy by tomorrow morning. The visibly agitated president accused the country's Central Bank officials of falling asleep at the helm of the country's COVID-19 economic recovery efforts, while other countries have implemented various various tools to revive their economies. Saukya crisis eka. Eka economic crisis eka kwenna denda puluang khamak ne. Lukurata wal vitarak nevei, podirata wal pawa central banks vishala piyavara wal aragan. Then api mokadda pawa icce kalla tina tool eka. Kisi deyak ne. Kisi ma deyak me venuing api maha bank huwa karla ne. Ogol langa vivida tools tiye na meekata. ये टूल्स पावी चिकराने टोन है भाई अपे महाबैंक को किसी में टूल लगा पावी चिकराने निकांग निदा आ गान आप ही क्यों रुपी 150 बिलियन में बैंक को अल्ट देंड में बिजनेस असल वैराद दाग ने भाई पासुगिया वैरादी निशा हम कंपनी है कटमा राजेंग विशाल मुदला गेवांड दिए नो द में मुदला में आयता सिक्योरिटी का कहती थी आगन बैंक कॉलिंग इधर देंड में आयता लोन ने का गंड इतो कोटे एक ओल्ड अंट पुलवा इकोनॉमी का दो अंड में मनी सर्कुलेशन ने कने में का सिंपल दे आगने में बेसिक्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स ने है बे उगोल मना द करा नहीं Ogolangge beradi, ini raja wal pita. Dan balan finance companies wal terbelah tiennya beradi. Ogolangge warga kimiak ni finance companies niya mana kiri masa kalaman akar ni kiri. Ewa karan nitne. Leasing companies, ewa karan nitne. ETI eka. Eka ogollo beradi vidya ta kerala. Anti mata gewa gan debe ini suntes halli. Ini pasi dah finance, api dan nitne. Eka wahala dah eka ter halli gewan. Ewa kalaman akar ni karan ni ne. Otni inya ukkam economies lani lakshya ganam padigan. Mula kerana ni, ni awal orang warga kini mang tiada apa, ni ni krisis yang ada tu ni dah gan ni nato. Ogol ni tiada ni, vivid krama wedya ni hara ha. Jadi mama dia la tiada ogol ni krama wedya. Eka ogol ni kerana ni berana hitam udah mana kerana ogol ni dengan pulang krama wedya mati di depan kerana ni bala ni ni tata small and medium size businesses beragam ni kerana ni mana. Koi apa yang kerana? Eko ogol bawa amaru itu ada anu raja itu bahasa tapi repat kerana inna ayah mati bemi dia kata kerana orang ni, ogol orang kalau raja karya kerana mana? Masa attack dia mampat pula. Apa dah wasi indera main kian orang? Apa ekonomi yang kini orang main ati cik ekonomi yang kian? Mati orang ni gian dua kerupu beradik yang arwah orang main kata kerana? Numpu ogol orang dah nama ni? Bank tu yang horror kan kerana kotor mana ogol orang ni hitie? Eh, bayi dia kalau ni sayo ke dunia ni? Ayi mami illan sah dar ni dia tak ada kerana beri. Mahajan itu dana kan don, memang ini lada hari ini kerana apa pun anda baca, mata jangan tahu dia lagi yang apa, wisal balaya, mereka itu hadan tak kira, mami illa ni mata mereka hadan ni tidak dend, corona virus yang kawa, ikat ada loko yang kawada kat nanti arti ke arbu deh kat awi lati yang apa, sauke depan tu main tu, yudha muda, budhi ansa, polisi, memang kepawi memang baca kalau apa puluan guna loko, anitra tol tol, istilah, memang nematat rata yata yata terdegend. 
දැන් අපිට තියෙන මේක ඉකොනොමික් ක්‍රයිසිස් එකක පහලටම වැටෙන්න ඉස්සෙල්ල මේක ගොඩ ගන්න ඒකක තියෙන ඕගොල්ලන්ගේ අතේ දැන් ඒක අපි කරන්න මට ඉඩ දෙන්න මම කල්පනා කළ මේව බලලා මම කියපු එක කරන්නවත් ඕගොල්ලෝ ඉදිරිපත් වෙන ඒකටත් බ්ලොක් කරනවා මට කියන්න තියෙන එච්චරයි හරුණා කළා මම කියන දේ පුරු කරන්නේ නැත්තම් ඕගොල්ලන්ගේ එක හෙට උදේ වෙනකොට දෙන්න Former central bank governor at the time of the central bank bond scam Arjuna Mahindran has reportedly changed his name by official means in a bid to escape the long hand of the law this revelation was made during court proceedings by deputy solicitor general Parinder Rana Singh who stated that Interpol has informed the attorney general's department that the chief suspect in the massive bond scam is now known as Harjun Alexander Former governor of the central bank Arjuna Mahindran is accused of acting in a manner favorable to his son-in-law owner of the perpetual treasuries limited Arjun Aloysius during the controversial bond transactions of the central bank in 2015 Following the central bank bond scam coming to light 10 suspects involved were served indictments by the attorney general Accordingly the case was recalled before the permanent trial at bar today consisting of justices Sampath Abekon Sampath Vijay Ratna and Champa Janaki Raja Ratna When the case was taken up today Deputy Solicitor General Parinder Rana Singh appearing on behalf of the Attorney General revealed that according to Interpol Sri Lanka's most wanted fugitive former central bank governor Arjuna Mahindran has changed his name to Harjun Alexander The deputy solicitor general informed court that the attorney general had asked his Singaporean counterpart whether the extradition proceedings of Mahindran needs to be amended. However, the Singapore Attorney General's department had informed Sri Lanka's AG that there was no need for such amendment. The deputy solicitor general also informed court that he is ready to make further submissions if amendments are to be made pertaining to this case. Furthermore the deputy solicitor general stated that the 10th suspect in the case Arjun Punchiheva is currently residing in Singapore he requested the court to issue notice on Punchiheva summoning him before court accordingly the three member judge bench issued notices to the 10th suspect of the case to appear before court and ordered the case to be taken up again on the 17th of November The Commissioner General of Prisons Tushar Upuldenia stated that steps will be taken to install surveillance cameras in all prisons in the country adding that telephone jamming systems will also be installed at prisons following the discovery of luxury goods in the possession of select high profile inmates meanwhile speaking at another media briefing head of traffic division DIG Ajit Rohana states that new regulations will be added to the prisons ordinance to prevent illegal items being taken into prisons A search operation conducted by the intelligence unit at the Nigambo prison has uncovered a luxury bed, a fan and a refrigerator in one of the cells occupied by an inmate sentenced for organized crime activities. විශේෂයෙන්ම පසුගිය දිනක මීගමු බන්ධනාගාරයේ සිද්ධිය සම්බන්ධයෙන් සාකච්ඡා කරනවා නම් මම බුද්ධි කුමසාරය සිද්ධියට ඉන්නකොට තමයි ඒ අත්අඩංගුවට ගැනීම සිද්ධ කරේ ලැබුණ තොරතුරකට අනුව ඉතින් ඒ අනුව දැනට ඒ සම්බන්ධයෙන් බන්ධනාගාර දෙපාර්තමේන්තුවේ පරීක්ෂණයක් සිදු වෙනවා ඒ වගේම එම අධිකාරිවරයා මේ වන ස්ථාන මාරු කරලා තියෙනවා ඒ වගේම තමයි අපරාධ පරීක්ෂණ දෙපාර්තමේන්තුවෙනුත් මේ සම්බන්ධයෙන් පරීක්ෂණයක් පැවැත්වෙනවා දැනට තුන් දෙනෙක් වල දානම් කරලා තියෙනවා. ඔව් ඉතින් ඒක පැස පැහැදිලිවම වගකීම ඒ ආයතනයේ අධිකාරිවරයා. අධිකාරිවරයාගේ අනුමැතියෙන් තමයි දැනට තියෙන තොරතුරු අනුව ඔහු අනුමත කරලා තමයි අරන් යන්නේ. මේක සංගව ගෙන ගෙනි යන්න පුළුවන් දෙයක් නෙමෙයි නේ. ඔව් CCTV අපි දැන් තමයි අපි මේ සවි කරගෙන යනවා ගොඩක් ආයතනවල. ඉතින් අපි අදියර කීපයකින් ඒක කරන්න ඕනේ. ඉතින් ලැබෙන ප්‍රතිපාදනත් එක්ක මේ වගේ අවදානමක් තියෙන බන්ධනාගාර වලට මොබයිල් ෆෝන් ජෑමින් සිස්ටම් එකකුත් අපි කරන්න බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා. Meanwhile speaking at another media briefing head of the traffic division DIG Ajit Rohan states that new regulations will be added to the prisons ordinance to prevent various illegal items being handed over to prison inmates. Secretary of Defense retired Major General Kamal Gunaratne brushed away allegations of militarization of state institutions saying that he neither wants to nor has the power to do so his remarks came at a media briefing held in Colombo today 
විශේෂයෙන් සමාජ මාධ්‍ය ජාලාවල තිබුණ ආරක්ෂක ලේකම්වරයාට නැත්තම් කමල් ගුණරත්නට රජයේ නිලධාරීන්ව පාලනය කරන්න බාර දීලා කියලා මිට්ටෝරණි එහෙම කිසිම දෙයක් එතනින් අදහස් වෙන්නේ නැහැ මට කිසිම රජයේ නිලධාරියෙක් එක්කෙන මගේ යටතේ ආරක්ෂක අමාත්‍යාංශයේ ඉන්න නිලධාරී හැරෙන්න මට වෙන කිසිම කෙනෙක් පාලනය කිරීමට අවශ්‍යතාවයකුත් නැහැ එහෙම බලයක් මට දීලත් නැහැ නමුත් රජයේ නිලධාරීන්ගේ සහයෝගය අපි මේ රටේ මිනිස්සුන්ට යහපත් සමාජයක් ගෞරවාන්විත ජීවත් වෙන්න පුළුවන් පරිසරයක් හදන්න එන ක්‍රියාවලියේදී ඒකට සහයෝගය ලබා දෙන්න කියන එක පමණයි එතනදී තියෙන්නේ. The Colombo Magistrates Court has ordered the government analyst to submit a report on a laptop computer belonging to journalist Darish Abastians which was seized as part of investigations on the alleged Swiss embassy abduction saga. Further the magistrate also ordered for an additional report on whether the device had been tampered with in police custody. The Colombo Magistrates Court has called for a report by the Government Analyst Department on the laptop computer belonging to journalist Darish Abastians which was seized in connection with investigations into the alleged abduction of a Swiss embassy employee. Chief Magistrate Lanka Jayaratna directed the Criminal Investigation Department on the matter when the case was taken up this morning. Chief Inspector Kalum Karna Ratna of the CID presenting submission said the laptop computer in question was seized on 9th June following a search warrant issued by the court. He added that the computer was in the possession of Bastian's father-in-law in Pulhen Godenar and Bitter. Attorney at law Shiraz Nurdin, who appeared on behalf of Bastian, said, despite the CID claiming the laptop was seized on 9th June, it was in fact taken into police custody on 4th June, days before the search warrant was issued. Alluding to the possibility of the laptop data being tampered with, Nurdin requested the court to ensure integrity in this matter. Accordingly, the chief magistrate called for an additional report from the government analyst on data tampering between June 4th to 10th, if any. In addition the chief magistrate also ordered notice to be issued for Bastian's father-in-law Upali Indra Gupta to appear before the court at the next hearing in order to clarify events leading up to the seizure of the laptop. The CID was ordered to submit a report on the progress of the investigations. Further hearing of the case was then postponed to 21st July. Moon is on the other side of this break stay tuned. कोरोना वायरसे पैतरीम वालकवन न सब अनुदान दे अच्छो दाने Welcome back in Moon News General Secretary of the Bodu Balasena Organization Venerable Kalagudatti Jnanasarathevar told the Presidential Commission of Inquiry yesterday that although action was taken by the former Defence Secretary and current President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in 2014 to probe extremist activities a change in government in 2015 put a stop to the activities of intelligence units appointed to carry out investigations General Secretary of the Bodu Bala Sena Organization, Venerable Galagoda Atte Nyanasaratera, gave evidence at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday attacks yesterday. The Tera told the commission that at present there are six extremist Jamaat organizations operating in the country. The Tera also stated that activities of the World Assembly of Muslim Youth are clearly visible in the country these days, with its local headquarters situated at Mahavida Gardens in Dematagoda. The commission was also told that former Eastern Province Governor M L M Hisbullah's son heads an organization called the Hira Foundation which follows the Jamaati Islami ideology and that he was convinced that the former governor too subscribes to these extremist views. The commission then questioned the Tehra with regards to previous statements that alluded to former minister Richard Batyuddin being behind the Tawhid organization. The Tehra revealed that the former minister Batyuddin had accompanied his wife to cast her vote with her wearing a full face covering. He added that the former minister possesses significant assets and influence in the Badiklo, Ampara, Puttalam and Bawonia areas and that it was clearly evident that he was a follower of the Wahhabi ideology. The Tehra also told the commission that at a defense ministry meeting that he attended in 2014, he revealed 25 points including the need to deport foreigners involved in the dissemination of the Tauhid Jamaat ideology and the conducting of extremist sermons at madrasas in the country. At the meeting the Tehra stated was the former defense minister and current president Gotabaya Rajapaksa and intelligence officials such as brigadiers Hendra Vitarna and Suresh Sali the result of that meeting was the appointment of a special intelligence unit to look into islamic extremism however after 2015 with a new government taking office no action was taken with regards to his revelations at Tehra added the commission was told that religious tensions were created at the time such as the Teldenia and Digana riots as a distraction from the no confidence motion faced by the prime minister at the time 
A female patient who had recovered from the COVID-19 virus has been reported to have been reinfected with the virus days after returning home after full recovery. However, Chief Epidemiologist of the Epidemiology Unit, Dr. Sudat, Sudat Samaravira, stated that the case poses no risk of community transmission. In the meantime, the government has given the green light to operate day care centers from 1st of July. The country's COVID-19 recoveries have increased to 1,371, with the confirmation of 29 more recoveries by the Ministry of Health. With that, the total number of active cases from the virus now stands at 532. Furthermore, 28 more naval personnel recovered from the virus, bringing the number of recoveries among naval personnel up to 740. Meanwhile, 16 positive cases were confirmed during the last cycle, with six of the patients' recent arrivals from the Maldives. Furthermore, five arrivals from Kuwait, two arrivals from Bangladesh and Pakistan also tested positive for COVID-19, while the remaining cases were Navy sailors. In a new development, a female patient who recovered from COVID-19 has shown symptoms of the virus once again, resulting in her being admitted to the Anuradhapura Teaching Hospital for further treatment. Following her admission, she was subjected to a PCR test, which confirmed her positive infection. The 36-year-old female patient had arrived in Sri Lanka on the 18th of May and she tested positive for the virus on the 28th of May for the first time while in quarantine. She was then admitted to the Homagama Base Hospital for treatment and she returned home after recovery last Sunday. However, Director General of Health Services Dr. Anil Jasinghe said that there is no risk of community transmission from this reinfection. in a separate development, the Ministry of Women and Child Affairs has announced that daycare centres will be reopened from the 1st of July. Ministry Secretary Neil Bandara Hapuhinna said that daycare centres have been instructed to follow health guidelines introduced by the Health Ministry when they resume activities. He added that these guidelines have already been communicated to all daycare centres across the country. Following the relaxation of curfew restrictions, a spike in underworld drug activities were witnessed. However, the police department has been active in bringing to book several large-scale operations in the past weeks. Another operation brought to an end today with the detection of 6 kilograms of heroin in Katunayaka by the Police Narcotics Bureau. The Police Narcotics Bureau arrested a suspect with over 6 kilograms and 137 grams of heroin in Kuruna Katunayaka in the Nigamba Police Division. The arrested suspect was a 45-year-old residing in Katunayaka. The arrest was made during a raid carried out based on information received by the officers of the Police Narcotics Bureau last night. The drugs, which were packed into six bags, were found inside a larger parcel. The Police Narcotics Bureau is conducting further investigations into the incident. In a separate development, a bank account containing millions of rupees belonging to the suspect was arrested in Minuangoda over links with drug dealers has been suspended. According to preliminary investigations conducted, transactions amounting to rupees 120 million had been carried out through the account within the last year. The suspect was taken into custody recently and 30 million rupees was found in his bank account at the time after the Minuangoda police acted on a tip-off. A senior police officer said that the suspect in his confession had divulged that the money in his account was acquired through drug activities. The police obtained permission to detain the suspect and his bank account has since been frozen. Further investigations have revealed that the suspect also had ties with infamous drug dealers operating overseas. 
A circular has been issued informing public officers that the suspension of the recovery of installments and interest for the loans granted to them as a COVID-19 relief measure will not be applicable from the month of June 2020, the Ministry of Public Administra Administration stated. Rather, Secretary to the Ministry of Public Administration, Home Affairs, Provincial Councils and Local Government, J.J. Ratnasiri, has notified secretaries to ministries, chief secretaries of provinces, heads of departments of the decision in a circular titled providing relief to public officers considering the situation arisen due to COVID-19. It says that the decision taken to suspend the recovery of installments and the interest for the loans which have been granted to all public officers under the vote advance of public officers in advance accounts of part two of annual estimates until further notice as per the section two of public administration circular 7 upon 2020 shall not be applicable from the salary of the month of June and relevant loan installments and interest shall be recovered from the salary of the officers concerned as before it said. The circular has been issued with the concurrence of the General Treasury. Reverend Father Ernest Porutota, who portrayed a vital role in Sri Lankan cinema and in the field of Catholic mass communication, was called to eternal rest today. Father Porutota was 88 years of age at the time of his demise. Reverend Father Ernest Porutota had been receiving treatment in a private hospital at the time of his passing. Born in 1931, Father Ernest Porutota was ordained in February 1957 at St. Lucia's Cathedral in Kotahena. While being an integral part of the Young Christian Workers' Movement, Father Porutota was also the founding director of OCIC, the Sri Lankan chapter of the International Film Awards Cygnus Awards. Reverend Father Porutota authored several books such as Kitunu Peralia and Gihia as well. Father Porutota's remains are currently at the Archbishop's House in Colombo, while his final rites will be conducted on Thursday the 18th of June at 2.30pm at the St. Philip Neri's Church in Katukurun, the Kalutara. In your business news, the Central Bank's Purchasing Managers Index for the month of May has recorded a spike reaching 49.3, which is an increase of 25.1 index points from the all-time low of 24.2 recorded in April 2020. The increase has been attributed to the gradual resumption of economic activity following the easing of lockdown protocols. The country's manufacturing sector PMI recorded a noticeable bounce in May 2020 reaching to 49.3, which is an increase of 25.1 index points from the all-time low of 24.2 recorded in April 2020. The central bank says that the gradual easing of restrictions for mobility has contributed to the resumption of economic activities in the manufacturing sector. The production sub-index reported an index value of 51.1 in May 2020, compared to 3.5 reported in April, reflecting a significant expansion in volume produced, particularly in manufacturing of food, beverages and manufacturing of the textiles and wearing apparel sectors. Further, the new orders, stock of purchases and employment sub-indices also improved during the month of May, yet remained below the neutral level. Meanwhile, supplier's delivery time lengthened at a slower pace during the period, signalling a softening of stress on the supply chain. Many respondents in the manufacturing and textile and wearing apparel and manufacturing of chemicals and chemical product sectors highlighted that they still have not received orders for their products and therefore they have initiated to produce some alternative products relating to health and safety instead of the regular products. The overall expectations for manufacturing activities for the next three months significantly increased compared to the previous month, yet the central bank says that manufacturers are still concerned that the COVID-19 pandemic would continue to affect the consumer demand. Meanwhile, the new businesses sub-index increased in May 2020 owing to improvements in the new businesses in transportation and wholesale and retail trade subsectors, with the lifting of domestic travel restrictions which had been imposed to control the spread of COVID-19. Further, the business activity sub-index also increased significantly during the month, indicating a moderation in contraction of service activities. Business activities of transportation, wholesale and retail trade, professional services and telecommunication subsectors showed an improvement over the previous month with the normalization of business activities. However, business activities related to the tourism industry, including accommodation, food and beverage subsectors, declined owing to restrictions imposed on hotel operations and zero international tourist arrivals for the second consecutive month. 
Sri Lankan shares finished a touch higher today, supported by industrial stocks after data showed that manufacturing and services activity in the country picked up in May as coronavirus restrictions eased. The old share price index closed up 0.10% stronger at 4,915.56 points. Foreign investors were net sellers of loading about 543.6 million Sri Lankan rupees worth of shares. Trading volume fell to about 25.5 million compared with with 30.9 million in the previous session. Here's a brief report on today's market performance. Today the market was on a more of a positive momentum compared to the last three trading sessions. Basically, we saw the market boosting up at the start of the session itself and then being flat during the mid of the session. However, towards the end of the session, we saw a bit of selling pressure again creeping back into the market, erasing most of the positivity that was created at the start of the day. About 71% of the turnover, mainly from the banking sector counters, especially commercial HNB, some bank and we saw even LOLC which has been active in the past few days uh, being active today as well. Uh, selling pressure was mostly again uh, from the foreign side again mainly in the banking sector counters. HNB voting, HNB non-voting and LOLC were the main shares that we saw uh, foreign selling in. Over 200 million of net foreign outflow was uh, recorded today with turnover levels again uh, crossing a billion rupee mark with uh, retail high net worth and institutional investors are very active in the market, mainly on the local side. The Sri Lankan rupee ended at 186 rupees against the US dollar, which accounts for 0.05% depreciation for the day, compared with last session's close of 185 rupees and 9 cents. The currency is down 2.59% so far this year. Now let's have a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies during the day today. We'll return after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. In your sports news, the Board of Control for Cricket in India has announced that the Indian tour of Sri Lanka, which was scheduled to work off on the 24th of July, has been called off due to the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic. The tour was to consist of three one-day internationals and three T20s. However, the Secretary of the Sri Lanka Cricket, Mohan De Silva, stated that the tour will go ahead in August instead. That's a wrap from here at First at Nine. Thank you for joining. I'm Chanela Fernando. Good night.